Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ty Little Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of One Piece, welcome to Wano Peace. Haters get mad when I Luffy, boss up, who's he? Haters get mad when I Sanji, kicking it like Jet Li. Haters get mad when I Nami, that money come find me. Haters get mad when I Zoro, cut checks like Koro. Before we even start this video, I want to give a special shout out to the Wano Peace Pirate Crew. If you want to join the Wano Peace Pirate Crew, hit that subscribe button below. Do it! Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Wano underscore Peace for Wano Peace memes, Wano Peace channel updates, One Piece cosplay, and One Piece fan art. And just to give you an update, we are 200 away from 2,000 followers on Instagram. So don't be late. Get in there. This week, we are recapping chapters 411 through 420. You're in for a treat. So when we last left off, Chopper is big giant monster Chopper and he's attacking Khalifa and doesn't recognize Nami. He even attacks Nami also. Chopper then throws a big chunk of the building. Khalifa and Nami begin fighting again because after he does that, he disappears. How can a big giant monster disappear? I'm not sure. Now, Nami figured out how to get from under uh, Khalifa's attack. So she began to wash using water. Water defeats soap. Rock, paper, scissors. Nami uses a rain cloud attack to get all of her mobility back. And as we said before, don't mess with the lady straw hats because they're smart and they can fight. Nami uses a combo of different mirage attacks and then hits Khalifa with a thunderbolt tempo attack. Frankie and Nami meet up after this and they look for the key that Khalifa had. Now Chopper reappears. He's heading back over to Zoro and Soj King. He, I feel like he subconsciously just kind of knows what his mission is supposed to do because all he's doing is he's unconsciously doing things right now. Because the thing about Monster Chopper is he can't control it. He just destroys everything in his path. That's a lot of damage. Frankie noticed that Chopper was looking like he was going to die almost because it takes a lot of his energy to stay in that monster form. So what he did is he hit him with a, uh, he blasted Chopper with a huge blast that took him through the wall and into the sea. Then he, you know, went to go save him. But he did this to kind of knock him out so that way he wouldn't keep using his uh, energy as Monster Chopper. Frankie figured that if he got him in the water, he wouldn't, uh, that uh, he would turn back to normal because uh, he has a devil fruit power. And when they're, when people are in the water and they have a devil fruit, when they're in the sea and they have a devil fruit power, they lose all their powers. So he figured, you know, get him in the water, he loses his energy, turns back to regular Chopper, and we're good to go from there. While this was happening, Nami freed Zoro and Soj King with the number two key. Spandam sword actually gets bigger and turns into like it becomes like elephant size. So his sword is even cooler than I thought. Zoro and Keiko get into it one on one now, and Zoro's kind of has the upper hand, but Keiko keeps coming out with different attacks as he uh, learns to harness this giraffe devil fruit power. And then we switch to Jayabara and Soj King. They're battling, and Soj King or Jayabara uses this technique to get. He, he basically says, here, you can have the key to, to uh, Soj King. And when he goes to grab the key, Jayabara just whoops his behind, right? Why would you even fall for that? That's, that's headassery at his finest. You wouldn't want, um, that's a, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing or whatever. I don't know how to even explain it, but that's the oldest trick in the book. Here, let's be friends. Soj King slash Usopp is supposed to be the king of lies and he falls for such an easy trick. That's crazy. Now, just before Jayabara chokes Soj King out, like chokes him to death, Sanji comes back and kicks Jayabara in the face. He faces off against Jayabara and tells Soj King to do what he can, right? Because everybody can do something. Maybe you can't beat this devil fruit user, but you can go and help save Nico Robin in a different way. So Soj King goes to do goes to do that. So the way Sanji got free of Khalifa's power is when Chopper got blown through the wall, water got on Sanji and from a tub randomly, perfectly placed. Um, and he gets clean. 
the gates of justice are opening. So they're currently opening right now. So that means time is ticking. They're about to get Nico Robin through these gates and the Buster call is on its way. The Buster call is actually coming from where the gates of justice are opening. So that's where the ships are coming in at, which is crazy. Now Jaibara tries to trick Sanji the same way he tricked Soj King, but Sanji, he's not an idiot, so he doesn't fall for that. And now uh, Soj King is Usopp, and as we thought before, and everybody's just calling him Usopp now. They're kind of done with calling him Soj King, and I think they kind of welcomed him back into the fold. They never wanted him to leave anyway, but they understand he had to do what he had to do for himself. Now Sanji was able to take the key from Jayabara after a little tussle, and um, Jayabara was like, how did you get the key? He was like, bro, you gave it to me. And uh, so now Jayabara is chasing Sanji to get the key. The number one key that Jayabara had is the one that Nico Robin needs. Yo, but Sanji shows off his skills in this. He's like, mad highly skilled at fighting he used this like flaming kick that just whoops jai bar like he basically turned this into some wolf chops there's you've heard of lamb chops but he turned them into wolf chops he said god created food and the devil created seasoning and then he said i think i might have used a little too much seasoning now keiku and zoro going back and forth still pretty much evenly matched um but Zoro is tired of Keiku naming all of his moves in the battle. He's like, bro, you just made that up just now. And I feel him on that because any show you watch, they always say the move. I get it. It's for us. It's for us. We don't know that it's a spirit gun. We don't know that it's a Kamehameha, right? Unless they tell us. Now we know. But it's just weird when you're telling people exactly what you're about to do before you do it. Just my take on it. But I understand why they do. Now, Zoro stops one of Keiko's most fiercest attacks. And Keiko says, like, for a second, he looked like a demon with three faces and six arms. I'm sure that's some type of attack that, uh, that Zoro has or some type of hidden talent. I'm sure they'll show us more about that. And each time Zoro fights, don't forget he has that cursed blade. So it could be some type of demon like hidden in the blades. So that's cool too. But um, Zoro's getting stronger but with each and every fight. I look forward to when he finds Zoro defeats Keiku with his nine sword style demon technique. As we just said, has something to do with that sword, I'm sure. It could not have anything to do with the sword, but that's what I think. And then um, Keiku gives him the key. Okay, so Luffy was getting beat up by Luchi and then Frankie walked in and he's like, okay, so all I gotta do is get through the door. So he goes running to the door to get to Robin and then um, Luchi tries to stop him, but Luffy hits Luchi with a, a gum gum jet pistol, which is kind of dope because Luffy's starting to use all his gear three, gear two powers more often now. And we're starting to see him get even stronger too. And I think this is gonna be gears towards the future episodes. It seems that they keep fighting harder enemies, stronger enemies, in order to force them to unlock their full potentials. So Luffy is now whooping Luchi in gear two, even though Luchi has his devil fruit power and is actively using it. So he forced Luchi to use his devil fruit power and he's still whooping. Putting the whooping on him. You know, we already know that Spandam's father was Spandine or whatever, and he was the one that caused the death of all uh, that of Nico Robin's mother and all the other archaeologists on O'Hara, but he revealed that to her in this this set of scenes. Um, just before Spandam got Robin on the ship, Usopp saved her by sniping Spandam and his soldiers from super far away. So Usopp just started choo, 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 taking out everybody with his big giant slingshot and. Um, this is what Sanji was talking about. You can do something that other people can. You know, everybody else is good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. You go be the sniper. And he was the sniper, the sniper king at that. Frankie blocked Nico Robin from being shot. And then Usopp sent the keys over to Frankie in order to get Nico Robin free. Nico Robin then hit Spandam with a ton of slaps. Like just straight, whack, 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 whack. Like, you know, just disrespectful slaps like your mom when she told you, 
don't ask me for nothing in the store and you asked her for something from the store anyway and then she just smack you that's how it was and she just didn't hold back because she finally figured out like you're the one who killed everybody and anything that she loved like her his family line is the one the groups of people that did it so she put the whooping on him with the slaps for real now when the gates of justice open all those whirlpools that keep you from going getting over to the gates of justice they uh they stop and now the buster call begins. So you start seeing the ships, all the warships, the 10 warships, they start just letting it loose, letting it loose all on Eni's lobby. Everybody's trying to evacuate Eni's lobby in time. Will our heroes get done? I don't know, Luffy's still fighting Lucci. Uh, Frankie and Robin are planning to steal a ship though. Now if they can steal this ship, they can get everybody out of there in time, the whole squad. They can get everybody out of there in time. Lucci broke a wall, right? And it called water to flow in the underground passage. And Lu Nami and a few others are in that passage. I feel like Lu Lucci did that because he was low key, high key, uh, losing to Luffy in a fight, but he needed something to get, a an opportunity to get away before the Buster call. So he's gonna use this. I think he's gonna use this as an opportunity to get away, force Luffy to go save his friends, and we'll find out if everybody survives after this. Let me catch you up on the short comics. Not much to report today, but the Baroque Works organization, uh, they started a shop called the Spider's Cafe, and it looks like Crocodile and Mr. One through Three are being taken to the top security prison at Impel Down. And I guess that's because they just decided they weren't gonna go with everyone else when they escaped from the prison, which could be a good idea. I think it was a terrible idea. I think you should escape if you had the opportunity. But it seemed like Crocodile was just tired of this life. You go from being on top of the world where the government respects you and lets you do what you do to now just being a normalized criminal. I guess you would be tired too. Like how are you gonna build back up from that? There's nothing you can do. So impel down it is. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite part of these 10 chapters were. The Grand Line is a rough place. You're gonna need a tough pirate crew. Why not join the Wano Piece Pirate Crew by hitting that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching this one. Peace.